Well, it's good to be with you tonight. I'm going to preach a message that's a follow-up to the messages that the preacher has been giving you from Ephesians chapter 6 about the whole armor. The title of the message tonight is, Here, Take My Armor. And uh, we'll take a look at that. We're going to be reading the best-known story in the Old Testament. Anybody know what it is? The one you got, the first time you came to Sunday school, you heard about it. Is what? That's it, David and Goliath. That's what we're going to read. Everybody knows that's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17, right? 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 You're allowed to say amen or right or anything. When I, when the, when I leave that blank spot in there, you fill it in, all right? Right? Okay, good. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 17. But we're going to have a little different look at this particular story or really it's an incident in the life of David but we're going to center on just a little bit normally we're talking about David killing Goliath but from this story we're going to take something a little different as we look at this idea of here take my armor all right tonight we're looking at that and I want to begin reading at verse 32 and in verse 32 uh, down through verse 39 we read, And David said unto Saul, Let no man's heart fail him, because uh, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Thou art not able to fight against this Philistine, uh, to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcision Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, Evermore the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he shall deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. And Saul armed David with his armor and put his helmet upon a brass upon his head and also armed him with a coat of mail. David girded his sword upon his armor and essayed to go for him, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. Now let's pray together for a moment. Father, we pray you'll help us tonight to gain something from this particular incident that will help us understand a little more clearly what the preacher has been preaching to us about putting on the whole armor of God. We thank you tonight for th this incident. We thank you for uh, we've heard it over and over again in this young Every, every young child has learned about David and Goliath and the, the power of our God to, to kill giants. So we pray that you'll help us with that tonight and it'll be a, a blessing. Even though it's an old, old story, and we've heard it many, many times, we pray that it'll be new to us tonight. That something new will uh, grip our hearts and we'll uh, be able to better fight the giants. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name and amen. Um, at first reading it might seem that Saul was being very generous to David but we're going to find that that's not quite true Saul as he offered his own armor to David we might have thought that wow what a, what a generous man that Saul was but we're going to find that that really wasn't the truth and uh, as we think about this story you remember that the Philistines have have uh, come to this valley and they're on one side of the, the valley on the mountain and the uh, armies of Israel on the other side and they're kind of hiding in the rocks and caves over there with Saul and he's uh, uh, trying to figure out what to do about this and the Philistine has come out daily and he's uh, challenged the Israelites that they should send one person out to fight him and if he slays that person then the Philistines will be the uh, will be the servants of uh, the Israelites and if, and if the person slays um, or excuse me the other way around then if, 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 if Goliath uh, slay the 
representative from Israel, so that not a lot of men get saved, not a lot of slain, a lot of bloodshed, that they'll be the servants of the Philistines. So this challenge has been offered several times, and Saul has not done anything. Nobody's wanted to go out and fight this man. He, uh, if we uh, look at what we know of him, he should be about nine foot, uh, six inches tall. He, he's a, I'd make a good NBA player for today. He's a, he's a good tall man, and uh, he's been trained along with his brothers to fight, and, and he's a veritable fighting machine. When we look at Israel, we recognize that from the description of Saul that he's the tallest, biggest man in the, is in the Israeli army. He, uh, there's nobody. He's, uh, you remember when he was called the, out of the stuff that where he was hiding to come, that uh, it tells us that he was head and shoulders above all the other Israelites. So the natural choice to go to fight the uh, Goliath, the giant, should have been Saul. He was, he was the biggest man. He was the strongest man. And so that would have been the natural choice to go. We find he's not. He's hiding under a tree and trying to figure out how to get out of this predicament when David, just a teenage lad now, comes and he said, well, I'll go fight him. Uh, it's not me. And we'll see later on. He'll, he'll say to the Philistine, I didn't come with you with sword and spear. I came with you in the name of my God whom you have defied. And uh, I can defeat you because of that. And so we find that uh, the word comes to Saul that there's, a, there's somebody who's volunteering to go fight this giant. He said, I can't, you, I, can you just see him? Man, I hope somebody come along and volunteer to go. I, I didn't want to have to go do that. And they bring David, and he says, well, you're just a little guy. You can't fight me, so I can do that. I, I can fight a bear and a lion. I can fight, fight this guy. God will go with me. And at this point, Saul, we come to this, the title of the message, and Saul says, here, take my armor. And when we see that, we might think that, that again, that Saul was being generous to David by giving him his armor. But I want you to, to center on that a little bit and think about it. And as you think about it, remember that pastors have been preaching to us about wearing the whole armor of God. That we ought to be armed with our armor. And uh, we're going to center on that thought a little bit. Uh, we, we see that all Christians have to fight some giants. During your lifetime, if you haven't fought some giants, you're going to have to. Most Christians either just are fighting giants or they just got finished fighting giants or they're going to just start fighting giants. There are going to be some giants to fight in your Christian life. It's the truth. You might as well understand that at this point in time. They may not be necessarily nine foot six inch tall men, but there are giants who, Satan is the giant, of course, that's trying to destroy you and me. And, he, and again, we read in Ephesians 6 that we're to quench all his fiery darts. So you're going to have to fight some giants. There's just no question about that. There are going to be some things you come up against that you cannot control. And without the help of God, you cannot fight these giants without God's armor. And, and so that's what we're thinking about tonight. The second thing we understand about introductory wise about fighting giants is that nobody else can battle for us. Nobody can fight my battles for me. When I fight with Satan, I can't go to somebody else and say, you resist the devil, draw nigh to God, and I'll be all right. No, that I've got to do that. I've got to resist the devil and draw nigh to God because I, only I can fight my giants. And only you can fight your giants. Amen? Okay, but I, when you understand that this evening, that you can, only you can do it. Others can pray for us. They can support us. They can help us, but only you and I can conquer the giants that God's going to allow the devil to bring into our life. Only Job could conquer that problem that God allowed to come into his life. And so, uh, uh, songwriter puts it this way. He said, I saw the giant of prayerlessness upon the mountain high. He looks in my unbending knee. I'll, I'll fight that giant. I'll, you know, I know I'm going to win. I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I'm going to fight that giant. 
you may have to fight the giant of prayerlessness. You may have to fight the giant of, of uh, lust. You may have to fight whatever giant it is. You'll have to fight your giant. 